sphingolipids will generally have at least one fatty acid. They'll have at least one fatty acid on them. Okay. They will also have another long hydrophobic tail. So they already have two long tails, one tail that's part of itself and one tail that comes from a fatty acid. So we start to see it's got two long hydrophobic tails just like, just like a glycerophospholipid does. At one end, it can also, in some cases, have a phosphate. So again, we think about a glycerophospholipid, it has a phosphate, it has two long tails sticking off that are hydrophobic. Sphingolipids can, and I notice I'm saying can, in some cases have that as well. Okay? So here's an example. This guy it has a long tail, it has a long fatty acid, it has a phosphate, and it has something else attached here. Okay? This guy's called sphingomyelin. Myelin relates to, um, to um, uh, uh, neural membranes. Okay? And sphingomyelin is a very abundant compound we find in nerve membranes. All right? Very abundant compound we find in nerve membranes. In fact, sphingolipids we tend to find more associated with neural tissue than we do uh, in other places. So for example, neural tissue will have more sphingolipids than will, say, skin tissue. Okay? Brains are very abundant in sphingolipids. They have a lot of sphingolipids in them. Okay? Now, most sphingolipids do not have a phosphate. I want to emphasize that. Some can, the sphingomyelins can, but most do not. Instead, Sphingolipids have, you see this carbon where the phosphate went on, this bottom carbon right here? That's where the phosphate went on. Instead, they frequently have sugar molecules on them. They have sugar molecules on them. Okay. So if I have a, sphingo, if I have a sphingolipid that has one sugar on it, I call it a, a cerebricide relating to the cerebellum of the brain. A cerebricide is a sphingolipid that has one sugar on it. If I have a sphingolipid that has more than one sugar on it, it's called a gangliocide, relating to the ganglia of the brain. Okay. So we think of, of cerebricides as being relatively simple, and we think of gangliocytes as being relatively complicated. And I'll, I'll show you some examples. You, don't want, you won't need to draw structures, but you should know in words what I've just told you. Gangliocyte, G-A-N-G-L-I-O-S-I-D-E, gangliocyte. Yes? It has more than one sugar on the sphingolipid. So something that has one sugar is a cerebricide. Something that has more than one is a gangliocyte. What's that? It's also performing that barrier function. In fact, it will line itself up on that lipid bilayer just exactly like the glycerophospholipids will. I'm sorry? I still can't hear. I'm sorry. What about sphingolipids? They all, they will act in a lipid bilayer, they will always act as barriers, yes. Okay. I think that's a good place to stop. So why don't we stop there? That'll get us out of here a couple minutes early. And go enjoy the sun. Uh, review session tonight at 7 in ALS 4001. Please, please, please check over practice exams so you know the format of what we're going to be doing, OK? Right up that way, yeah. And what's the format of it? Ag and Life Sciences Building. It's, it's usually called ALS, but it's Ag and Life Sciences Building, okay? So Hi. Quick question. When you were saying, uh, you were talking about grading due to spelling. Yes. So that's kind of important to me because I can't spell well, anything. Well, good to learn. So my question is basically like saying, and that's the question that has 10 points. Uh-huh. And I answered correctly everything you want, but my spelling 
is bad. Well, well, we'll take we'll we'll look at it and see. Okay, I can't give you a rule, but my my guideline is spell. Okay. The exam is it gonna be similar? Yes, it will be very similar to the practice exam. Yes. In fact, the format will be exactly the same. Okay. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, is the AMLS, is that right question before, please? Yeah, it's the, that's the bridge. Okay. Okay? <laughs> yep. You have to go too far.